It's Rhonda here, and tonight we're going to hear Aaron Mayo talk about the 2010 wines from Trias. And welcome. Join right in. There's all the people right here. Introduce myself. My name is Aaron. I have been with uh, Andrew Peller Limited, or Vineyard Estate Wines, for a little over two years now. I was a sous chef for a little over eight years, which is partly why I ended up here. Uh, working with food and wine has long been a passion of mine. And so I was able to get in and start helping to educate people about wine, food, pairing, how to draw flavors out of the wines, things of that nature. Uh, typically we do this in a slightly smaller crowd. We usually do two sessions. Uh, this session we've gone for just one. Uh, we even have a member in absentia. So Frank, cheers. Sorry you couldn't be with us, but uh, maybe next time. I'll have your sample though. <laughs> So what we're going to be tasting tonight is a number of 2010 vintages. Winemakers the world over have said that 2010 is going to be one of the best releases of wine in the last 100 years. So if you like to collect wine, 2010s would be good ones to start stocking up on and building your wine collection. I'm going to start by getting into the fun part of the show, which is decanting. We're just going to let this sit and rest, partly because it's a 2010, and allowing it to breathe will just help soften it and get you fuller flavors and a more enjoyable experience. And let's be honest, that's just really pretty to watch. <laughs> and there is actually a reason I'm pouring it down the side of the decanter, and that's to allow for more air to hit the wine. What we want is maximum exposure for the air, which will help those tannins to evaporate, which will lead to a smoother, more flavorful wine. And I've got a little bit more room in there, and we've got a larger crowd, so I'm just going to do two. Or one change. Sort of try and keep pace. Um, I know some of us have done this more than others. I'm not looking at anybody in particular. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, we want to walk through and try and get an idea at the same time for what we can draw from the smell of the wine, the nose, uh, and then the flavor, the finish, things of that nature. So let's just see how much looks reasonable without getting awkward. And I'm going to stop about there. Unless I'm going to let it breathe. And think that's as good as decanting. You're only allowing a little bit of air. You want as much air as possible. You can pick up these decanters for about $25 as well. So. Well, if you're going to do that, you'd be better off pouring it in glass like glass. Exactly. If you're just going to have a glass, there's a great idea. Pour a glass, let it sit for 10 minutes while you're making dinner. Same as decanting. And if you have the right size glass, you can actually fit the whole bottle in it. <laughs> and somebody's going to get to try wine out of this Riedel glass later on. You answer the skill test. There is a quiz. <laughs> there is a quiz. And it's not the same question. <laughs> Jordan. He's like, I know the answer. No. Move to the other one. Exactly. If you've tried it in one of my glasses before, you can't think it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we're going to start off with the 2010 Dry Riesling. So that I at least have an idea. I'm coming in blind. I've not tried any of these. Every wine is different, and every vintage of every wine is going to be different. So. A 2009 might not age as well as a 2010. The winemaker will tell you, and when you find that out, a lot of times you can just go online. Um, just go to the, yeah, it is. It's, go to the winery page. So go to hillbrand.com, and you can download the tasting notes that you have in your hand, and it'll usually tell you right there. Um, there's a website group, sort of like the Facebook for wine, called Wine Align. They do reviews, and they will tell you when wines are good and tilt. Um, there's all sorts of ways. If you want, you just Google the wine. What was that name again? Wine? Wine Align. D-L-I-G-N? Yes. Yep. Uh, Laszlo Zabo, who is a huge wine connoisseur, and Dennis Lawson and a couple others, will do reviews on international wines. All right. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank I know how much you like your wine. Yeah. Cheers, Frank. So, I'm just going to grab the tasting notes to refresh myself. The grape was cool, pre lightly pressed when they squished this. They don't want to get all of the juice out. 
Reason being, then you'll start getting a lot more dryness and structure from the wine. So they lightly press it, leaving some juice in the grape. The reason they do this is for second pressings of other wines or to recycle back into fertilizer. But again, they want to capture all the flavor of the juice. They don't want it to get too astringent or sour. And you'll get that if you press, because then you're going to get acids from the skins and the stems. They also cool ferment it. The reason they do that is that it slows the sugars in the juice. That allows them to, again, control the flavor of the wine. They can control the sweetness, the acidity, by the fluctuating the temperature of the cooling and the fermenting process. And it's done all in stainless steel to keep that bright, fresh fruit flavor in. When you start adding oak to a wine, that's when it goes buttery and smooth and rich on you. So take a nose. And there's a slight mineral limestone smell to it. If you just give your glass a little swirl, you're going to open some of that up and then take another sniff, another nose, and it'll change on you. Now you get a lot more fruit. You get some of that pear, that white peach. I yeah. get a slight floral note. A lot of pink like, grapefruit. Like a blossom. Yeah, the, a, a floral yeah. blossom. So, all right. Now, when you taste your wine, never try and taste all of the wine on the first sip. You've had gum, you've had whatever you had for dinner. You're not going to get a true flavor. So just take a sip, rinse your mouth out, swallow, and then we're going to show you how to chew your wine on your second sip, which is where your flavor comes from. Okay, so for those of you who doesn't know how to chew their wine, don't be shy. Okay, so if you've never chewed your wine, you make an odd slurping sound. Don't be, don't worry about being rude or, or think that you're uncouth or whatever. If you go into a restaurant and somebody does this, they appreciate wine. If you do this in a restaurant, your waiter, your sommelier, and other people around you will know that you appreciate wine. So I'll demonstrate. What you do is you take a sip, tip your head forward, and just pull air into your mouth. And you'll just sort of feel it burble around. And don't worry, you're not gonna <laughs> drool. <all over. laughs> no, just don't she's, she's like, she's like, I'm gonna. No, no, trust me. It's all good. So it's just like this. Mmm. Once you take the air in, just close your mouth and let those fumes float around your mouth. Let the wine sit there for a few seconds before you swallow. And you should get, just like it says, a, pu a clean, pure fruit expression. I definitely get pink grapefruit. Yeah, yeah. I do a lot of it. And green apple. I haven't had a yellow plum in such a long time, I don't remember it, but... So give it a try. There you go. Don't be shy. It's, it's all good. All of you should have a very clean, a clean, crisp, a slight tingling feeling along the sides of your palate. Just how, so again, you're going to get the, that mineral, almost, it's hard to describe it, than to say mineral. I get a, a grassy stone, it's kind of hard to say, you know what it tastes like when you suck on a rock, but. It's not high mineral, it's from chemical, like it's not. No. Some of them you almost get that clay stone taste in your mouth, really yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. Isn't it's still very, very clean. It's still very clean. The apple taste of Okay, yeah, you're just getting, you're getting the apple. Yeah. Yep. Right off the bat, I get the grapefruit. For me, the apple comes yeah. after, and the apple is what's lingering. Yeah. Yeah. So, at 11.6, it's not the strongest wine, but your acid is 7.1, so it's fairly well balanced. Uh, serve at, your tasting note says serve at 10 to 12 degrees. A lot of people say, okay, I'm going to have a glass of white wine. Open the fridge, grab the wine, pour it, and drink it. No. Your fridge is 3 to 4 degrees. You're drinking it too cold. What you're going to get is a lot of the acid tang. It, yeah, it's cold, it's refreshing, especially on a hot summer day. But you're going to lose a lot of the flavor. You're going to lose that peach on the nose. The green apple is going to go away. You're just going to get citrus. So you want to let your wine warm up. So open, pour the glass, let it sit for 10 minutes. Or let the bottle. We actually pulled this out about 15 minutes before everybody got here. Just so it had a little bit of time to warm up. Come on, get a glass of red because that shoes are served at a good temperature, but wait, it's too cold. Yeah. Now we get to the fun part, the food pairings. This is the part I like. It recommends sushi, selfish, 
oysters, salmon, tilapia, and halibut. You'll note tilapia, halibut, shellfish, oysters, a lot of white, mild flavors. A lot softer foods. Uh, they're going to be more mild, sweeter meats. Salmon is a fairly sweet fish. So you're going to want to complement the acid in this and the citrus with those flavors. Creamy cheeses. Uh, lemon chicken. Take out fish and chips. Again, a white fish. Fish and chips, haddock, cod, halibut is what you're normally getting. And if you want a really good fish and chips place, there's one in Cambridge called Kaz's Great Fish. It's on Pine Bush. And again, you can get your choice of batter, choice of fish. They do a fantastic job. Brie, camembert, little double cream brie, some berries. Okay, then hang on, because we got treats. <laughs> okay. So it also says in your tasting notes to drink young and fresh. Oh, I thank you. It says to drink young and fresh. That simply means that the white wine and most white wines are not meant for aging for long periods of time. You don't lay a white wine down for four and five years, primarily. There are a few, but not many, that you would age this. So usually within the first year or so, you'd want to drink this. Keep it young, fresh. Otherwise, you're going to lose those flavors. So here's a slightly spicy snack for you which will help balance out the sweetness and the acid. It really does. It brings up some of the fruit and it takes away the acid. That's just your palate mingling. Hmm. A, a lightly spiced curry, buttered chicken, um, mild curries from Bentan, things of that nature. Anybody care to hazard a guess as to why the wine will change once you've had something spicy? The spice opens up the pores in your tongue, you're going to generate more saliva. The wine and the acid in your saliva and the enzymes will then alter. 90% of your sense of taste is based on your sense of smell. You've got, you're eating something, the aroma from the food is going to roll around, it's going to get into your olfactory senses, you're going to smell that, so that when you smell and taste the wine, it's going to sort of hide, which is why it softens. Your spice is always your stronger of the two. You're taking sweet and sour, and you're hiding it underneath spice. I know, I know we said spicy. Spicy sushi would overpower that too much. I would go with sweet crab, shrimp, white tuna. No problem, I can do all that too. Barbecue deal. <laughs> Ceviche is a Peruvian dish. It's a Peruvian sashimi, where in the seafood is cold cooked in citric acid. So you're going to take scallops or shrimp or salmon, shave it very, very thinly, and you're going to cook it in the citric juice. So it comes out looking cooked, hasn't touched heat. You get all that flavor with it, and then you're going to get the sweetness of the meat, the acid, any other flavors, you're going to put some chili, some sesame oil, and you're going to pair, pair that with... Wine. <laughs>